Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. In this video, I need to clean and protect the leather seats in my M140. So I'm just gonna set the camera up, get it all clean and bring you along for the ride. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel guys, so all my leather stuff, I've prattled on about leather loads on this channel and you have to go and dig out all the information in various other videos but I keep it all on here and it's and it's all it's all colour lock. I've got a few other little bits and pieces of products that I've used as well that I that I like that I wanted to keep. I've got the Optimum Protector which I quite like as well. Um, but I just keep it very simple with colour lock. Their products are good. There's a video in the tank that I'm gonna I'm waiting to bring out on leather that's really interesting on all this stuff and how all these products perform side by side and next to each other. But I won't spoil the beans on that one. But in short, the stuff that I'm recommending you on the channel is pretty pretty cool stuff. But this is less about products really guys, and this is just a, a chance for me to actually get these seats clean. They look clean, but they're not. What is important to me when I clean my leather, one, you've always got to kind of adjust to what you're trying to clean. If you're cleaning a car that's done 100,000 miles and the leather's never been cleaned, then you need to be pretty aggressive. You can't mess around. You've got to go in, not heavy handed, but you take a more aggressive approach. With my leather in there, it's going to be a milder kind of wipe down approach, although I will be using the brush because it's got all the texture in it. Um, it's going to be a gentle clean and then it's gonna just be an anti-friction coating, the leather shield that I've talked about. The cool thing about the shield is it does not affect gloss at all. I've tested that as well as part of the PVD test. It just doesn't alter the gloss reading. So when you go into a showroom, you know, like your Audi or your BMW showroom, you see all these new cars and you crack open the cockpits and have a look inside. Leather looks lovely, okay? But more often than not, the leather's just a nice matte kind of finish. A lot of products, maybe more old school now. So when I say a lot, you know, there's a lot of products out there, but a lot of leather kind of conditioners and stuff can be oil based and can add a ton of shine to leather, which, you know, although that's, you know, the word on the street now is that that's a faux pas. Sometimes with old battered leather, when you go and throw one of these old products on there, they, 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 they can do a job and the user experience is positive. You know, so at the end of the day, if you've got old leather and you put like something on it that makes it all shiny and you like that, then don't let anyone tell you it's wrong. Um, that's the first thing. But with leather like this, I don't want to be covering it in something that's going to add loads of shine to it and gloss. I just want to retain that kind of new look to my leather. That's my aim at the moment. So that's why I'm using the Color Shield, Color Shield, Color Lock Mild Leather Cleaner. It's mild by name, but it's still a potent cleaner, but it's safe, okay? A very potent cleaner. You wait till you see the results of the uh, the mega tests. Um, and we will be using the leather shield. Color lock um, have simplified it even more. You just buy, you can buy a new, a new leather car cleaning kit box. And it has in there the mild leather cleaner and the leather shield. That's it, done, all you need. You don't need any other products. Um, but, well, there it goes again. I'm always dropping the stuff on this channel. But they also sell this smooth leather car set, um, which contains the mild leather cleaner again, and the leather protector. So that's for leather that's a little bit more aged and might be open now and porous and at the right time where it's gonna benefit from being treated with conditioners. But those, those conditioners need to penetrate to work. So especially for proper, you know, leather, real leather if you like. That can be important if you like soft leather. Um, but even as Colour Lock say, you don't need to, or you shouldn't be using their protector product, their conditioner on new leather. It's just not required. So it's very simple, clean and protect. In terms of the mild leather cleaner and the strong leather cleaner, like when I first saw them, I thought, I'll just get the, I'll just get the strong one. You know, I'll just get the strong one. Go for the, go for the th full, throttle approach. Honestly, the mild leather cleaner is virtually the one you want to be using in about 95% of all scenarios. It, the exceptions being the cars that are really, really filthy and got heavier grime over them where you really need that extra cleaning power. But 
it's a strong cleaner, the mild leather cleaner, okay? It's just, like I say, I don't want, mild makes you think that it might be, you're not getting your money's worth, at least in my book it does, but you are. So that's the one to have. In terms of the rest of the equipment that you need, well, obviously a good leather brush is, is important. I'm sure there's lots of good ones out there, but the, the Color Lock one is cheap as chips. I think Clean and Shiny sell it for, for £2.95. So there is just no seam tax with this brush at that price, is there? I'll check that price. I'm doing everything off the top of my head. This is an off-the-fly video, but £2.95, and it's a really great little brush, just the perfect size, not too stiff and aggressive. You know, you don't want to be poking holes in the leather or really tearing across it with an aggressive brush. So most of these are quite soft. Um, so that's the brush I'll be using. In terms of cloths, you can use microfiber. I was chatting to Ian at UK2, in the, uh, UK Detailing, not UK2, um, and he was telling me that microfiber, it doesn't, this doesn't matter, this is getting into fine details, and even, even Ian, Ian was saying he uses microfiber. Microfiber is kind of the most aggressive thing to buff over leather with. Um, a standard terry cloth is kind of perhaps more suitable. It's like the considered tool of choice in terms of, you know, cloths to wipe leather down with. So just like a, uh, where are they? Oh, God. Just like a normal terry cloth, um, if you've got them, but you don't need them. You can use microfiber, guys. To trust me on that, you can. Um, I use these uh, viscose cloths. They're even cheaper. You can reuse them. There's one that's been. You can wash them, and they're kind of synthetic um, cotton and viscose or whatever. Um, they're very, very soft. They're not very aggressive. And they're very smooth over leather, but they've got enough in them to actually absorb that very thin layer of dirt that you'll get on there. So. Typically, I use these at the moment. I'm going to run out of them in a, probably about a month's time, and uh, that will be the crunch test for me. Do I go and buy another pack of them? They're pretty cheap, and you get loads of them. So I think I'll probably stick with those viscose cloths. Um, just I like the way that when they do, you can use them a couple of times, wash them if you want to, and then throw them away after a few uses. There, that sort of product. So anyway, let's get stuck into uh, cleaning out the leather. I've talked long enough. Okay, guys. So seat has been put back. Hoover has been uh, used, deployed, <laughs> to uh, take all of the um, debris, you know, grit and stuff like that out of the leather. You don't want to be going in cleaning without hoovering first, which is really important. So we're in pretty good stead here. Now I want to get this leather clean. Looks clean. It is not clean by any stretch of the imagination, actually. So I'm looking forward to getting this done. So I've got here very few tools in the car, which is me, which is nice. I've got the shield here. I've got a couple of viscose cloths. The cleaner and the brush and I'm going to start with the easy section actually I should probably start at the top and work my way down but uh, I just want to get the main meat and veg of this on film so so easy to do this whenever you're cleaning leather um, your hands are going to get really sticky and greasy when you because there's a lot of grease and grime on this so it's a good idea to put the old sticky gloves on you know all this dirt that's coming off backsides and stuff like that you know it's not good stuff but um, I'm filming that's my excuse so no gloves for me uh, just give this a little shake, pop some on here so you don't need to use much, just get a little squirt of it and I'm going to work my way over the seat, starting here just because you can see it, like I said I'd normally start at the top, um, so hopefully you can see this, and I'm using very gentle pressure with this guys, I do not need to be scrubbing this particularly hard, this brush will get into all the kind of little embossment patterns of the leather. I can see the foam discolouring a little bit, going a bit brownie already because 10,000 miles is enough to get a fair old amount of dirt in these. So that is it. You can't take forever doing this. As long as I've hit all the leather areas, I'm not worried about under there. Right. Now I'd probably cover this whole seat before I go back and wipe, but I just want to see what we're dealing with here. So let's get the viscose, viscose cloth. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> nice. So what I don't want to see is any kind of colour transfer on this particular cloth, which I'm not getting. The difference already. The difference already. You know, I said you look at the leather. I'll, I'll, I need to pull the camera in, really. You know, the leather here, I can still see all the shine on it, and the leather here now has just gone back to that nice um, original BMW 
look, which is what I'm after. So I don't want to touch it as well because my fingerprints are all relatively greasy. So let's just get this nice and clean. I'm going to carry on and get the rest of this seat done and I'll leave I'll leave a little section so you can see the difference as well. You don't need to use a lot of this product. I know it's a detailing cliche, but it's, it's absolutely true. So there we go. Now let's wipe that back. You wipe it out, get all this cleaner and foam out of the crevices. So you see, as I'm doing this, I'm not getting any kind of tra colour transfer on the uh, cloth, which is important to note. So I've still got top coat on here, protecting, sitting between. Okay guys, so what I'm doing here is I've got some distilled water, you could use tap water if you like to live dangerously, and a new viscose cloth. And I'm just going to spritz the water on here and go back over it, just to get any products. We've done quite an intensive cleaning, you know, rubbing all this foamy product, and I just want it off before the sealant goes on, so that's what I'm doing. Let's get that out of the way. You see, there's just a tiny little bit of white residue there, and that's the, the that's the product. Not much. They do say you can uh, you can use a slightly moist kind of cloth, but I always find just this kind of wipe down is important. The worst thing you want to do is just go hurling tons and tons of leather cleaner on these seats because they don't need it. And um, that's why I like the the um, little pumpy foam one that you just you controlling how much you put on there. So just, it's the foaming action that kind of lifts off the dirt and the scrubbing it, you know. Um, 
So when you're spraying a product on there, you're actually using way too much product potentially. And all of that product, you don't want to leave it on the seat after you finish. So that's another reason that I like the color lock stuff. You don't need to use a lot of it. You shouldn't be using a lot of it. And once you finish cleaning it, you don't want the cleaning product to still be on the leather. You just want the clean leather and that's part of getting the nice finish. So, as you can see here, if this was all covered in product, as I'm wiping over it and spraying it, you'd be getting that kind of whiteness coming back, but it's not there. So, but it's a very important step this for me. I'm, I don't know, I don't know, you know, everything's controversial in detailing, but I like, this is what, what I like to do. So that's just getting it completely product free. There we go. And I'm just gonna move the camera. Oh, yeah. Wife's holiday roast. Right, I don't know if you can see this. There we are. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this seat down here. Little spritz of water. And then just come back in and mop it up. There's more, I used more on here. So this is important. There we go. Okay guys, I'm using the tripod as a selfie stick here, so bear with me. Um, I'm gonna just show you the leather seat here. I'll bring you in, see how this looks. Um, bear with me, bear with me. Right, so there is the, the leather that we've cleaned, and that is the look I'm looking for. I've got a bit of wrinkle in there. Um, you know, this is a leather seat, it's gonna have bums sitting on it, so it's not gonna stay perfect, but now the finish is, is looking like it should do. It doesn't have that shine to it, okay? It wasn't bad. But that's how closer to how it would have looked when it was with BMW. And if we look at kind of, if we even just look at this um, armrest here, you can just see the little bits of shine. It's not picking up too well on the camera, but it's there. It's just a little bit, it's got that kind of layer of grease that's built up on there. And um, that's what we're trying to get rid of. We're just trying to get this flat kind of matte new, new leather look back. And it's done that really well. Um, so we are ready really now to go in with the, um, the leather shield after that. Now let me just, so, so just bring the camera back into selfie mode. Let's make sure the nose doesn't look too big. That's all right, that'll do. This is far too close. <laughs> okay, um, so the important thing to say here, this leather shield, this anti-friction coating, with the age of my car, I don't really need, I, first of all, I don't need to put it on any of the non-contact areas especially, because it's not altering the finish, it's just lowering the friction. So what's the point of putting it on the back of the headrest and like, you know, all these bits? I'm putting it really on the faces of the seat where I'm sitting, and I'm really interested in the driver's seat, because 99% of the time it's going to be me getting in and out of the car. The passenger seat as well a little bit. The back seats, yes, okay, but they're going to get like they're going to get like one percent of the friction wear of the, compared to the front seat so it's less important so the main my main priority is getting the driver's seat ultra clean and and getting that shield on there i don't know if you can do two coats of it i'll just look at that but, but you know that's my priority getting those bolsters really heavily protected and stuff like that so i'm going to go ahead and do this now okay guys so i've just thrown the camera on the dashboard <laughs> so we want to avoid touching this with my greasy hands so we've got lovely nice leather here I can feel it and here we have the leather shield so I'm just going to give that a little bit of a shake and what does it say on the back here apply it after cleaning and 24 hours after after recoloring that's okay use a clean cloth first use a soft dry cloth spin spread thinly from seam to seam in contact areas which are most exposed to friction and discoloration, and let it dry, repeat every three to six months. So it doesn't say anything about two coats. Damn, I, lo I love the feeling of putting two coats or something down, double the protection, but I'm just gonna follow the instructions. So one coat, 
Right, so I've got a new clean viscose cloth here. And we're gonna, is it coming out? Yeah, we're gonna put a good amount of, of this on there. Full Rambo mode. And just work this around all of the contact areas. So you can see where it's going. Seam to seam, it says. And here on this bolster, I'm definitely interested in making sure that we get a good amount on there. And all over this bolster. And especially here on this leg rest as well, because that gets a lot of friction. Right. And that is it for that lower section. Now I want to do, oh you couldn't really even see that could you, this is so awkward to film guys. Right, now I'm going to do this bit. Good amount of the protector on here, or this, the shield, let's call it the shield. Let's start at the top. So that's it guys, just wanted to bring you in on the journey for this one. The key things I want to take for this is you take from this is what do what's appropriate for the leather. My car's done about 10,000 miles, driver's seat needed cleaning, so it needed the brush action to get in there. I could see the shine on it, um, you know, so I wanted to get that out. Wasn't going in with massive pressure. You should not be scrubbing hard and fast on nice conditioned leather, because that's, you know, this friction and rubbing on things that really does break that kind of top coat down. And there's no need, you're just working the product in there, letting the product do the work and then wipe it off. Obviously, the older the leather is, the harder it all is, and you up the aggression then. So, you know, that's fair enough. But for what I was doing there, just nice, gentle rubbing. And the second thing that I want to, want to take away from this video is with these cleaner products, you know, there is no purpose to them staying on the leather. So you use as little as you can, and, you know, you want to wipe that off, ideally. If you've thrown loads on there, you know, which we, we all may be guilty of doing that at some point, um, you might not see it after it's dried, so if you just, the tip is to get that damp clean microfiber cloth or viscose cloth or terry cloth or whatever, you can have it damp already or just spritz a fair amount of water into it's wet and wipe over once, you know, as a final kind of measure before putting the protector down and you're looking for that kind of detergent white trail as you wipe over it. If you're getting that, then there's still product there that you need to remove, so just keep going till that's all gone. I'd also, as always, like to know what you're using. What cl what cleaner do you like? What anti-friction coating do you use? What conditioner do you use? Why do you like the products that you're picking at the moment? Is it the price? Is it that they're glossy and you do want gloss? You know, is there a restorative effect for you on old leather or they're just a jack of all trades product that you can use? I use these because they're simple, okay? And it's the, the protector I'm using less on this because it's new, but the cleaners are brilliant and the anti-friction coatings work. And I've seen that with my own, with my own um, nuggins here, the old eyeballs. Um, which leads me on to kind of the last bit of this video is that there is a mega test coming on PVD where we are putting all these cleaners and all these protective products up against each other to see firsthand, you know, what cuts the mustard and what doesn't. Because there's a lot of information out there. It's quite, um, it's quite a competitive section of the um, detailing industry. So I hear... Um, and you know, everything, we're testing these £2.90 kind of Lord Sheraton wipes, and the wipes seem to get a bad rap, you know, but they cost £2.90 and you can keep them in your glove box, and that's the main thing about them, is they're convenient for most people, they're not going to have all this leather cleaning sort of different products in there, and little brushes and microfibers in the dash, in the glove, glove box, so if you spill coffee on your car, the most important thing you do is not let it dry and get it off there and then, so there's that element to them, but do they actually work, and are they as bad as the industry makes out at cleaning and, and do they actually provide any protection like they say on the packet? So that's all the stuff we're delving into in the next mega test. And I, I won't 
reveal what the 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 end game was, what the results were, but let's just say it was very interesting as always. So stay tuned for more stuff on that. So that is it on this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I will see you um, on the next video on the Forensics Detailing channel. Bye for now. What's up?